We have Republican Congressman Mo Brooks joining us right now from Alabama. Sir, it is good to see you. People on this show remember you very well uh, from your poise uh, and your profound emotion on the morning of that horrible shooting in Alexandria. As you know, we've been following how the uh, whip Scalise is doing. We know he was back in the hospital. We know he's fighting. I know that how are you doing has become a loaded question for you, but uh, give our viewers some peace of mind. How are you this morning? I'm doing fairly well considering the circumstances that we all went through, and it's, uh, it's good to be on your show, Chris. Uh, Allison, thank you for the invitation, and I look forward to focusing on public policy issues. What's happened has happened. Our prayers are with Steve Scalise and his family, and, and we hope for a speedy recovery. You were strong then, you're strong now, and equally committed uh, to your work for the people, so let's get after it. The president tweeted this morning, I can't imagine Congress would dare leave Washington without a beautiful new health care bill, fully approved and ready to go. Do you think that's possible? It's possible that the Senate will do its job, do something on health care, and send it to the House of Representatives where we would either uh, reject it and move to a conference committee or accept it. Uh, but the indications are right now that the Senate is mightily struggling uh, to come up with a plan to properly deal with the health care issue that's in, face, in front of us. If the CBO score that people are waiting on comes out and once again shows that what's being seen as tax savings uh, will wind up leaving millions of people off the Medicaid rolls at some point, whether it's now, five years, or seven years, do you think that that is a death sentence for this bill? Well, it is with some senators and not with others. Uh, we always have to keep in mind our financial ability to pay for things. And there are a lot of struggling American families out there who are working for a living, who are otherwise self-sufficient, who are right on the edge of having to go on welfare because of all the tax burdens that they're facing. And I'm like everybody else. I would love for every American to have a perfect health care system where we could deliver perfect care every time someone is ill, but we don't have enough money. And we're already risking a, an insolvency and bankruptcy of a, of a nation that it took over two centuries of our ancestors to sacrifice and to build. So we have to take into account our financial limitations and do the best we can. With Medicaid, by way of example, we're already forcefully taking $350 billion a year, more than that, from hardworking American families to help those who are not able to or for whatever reason don't pay for their health care. Now the question is what, is, what are our limitations? How much more can we do mm. without having a tragic adverse effect on, say, the goose that lays the golden egg? Congressman, so that policy argument that you're making winds up being uh, put into conflict with the reality of where this money that's being saved will go. People will say, look, you're so concerned about uh, how much you can afford, that's one thing, but you're going to give it in a tax cut to the wealthy. So if you really care about those middle class families that are struggling and the poor who need Medicaid, you shouldn't be giving a tax break to the wealthy. Well, those I, two understand are the in opposition. That, I understand the argument you make, but at the same time, understand that those folks who have the money are the ones that create the jobs that employ us. So sure, we can take money from the people who have been successful in America, but every time we do so, they have less money to invest. And in a free enterprise economy, it's that wealth that creates the businesses, that creates the jobs for our blue collar and middle class workforce. So again, it's all interrelated, and it's a tough balance to achieve as evidenced by the Senate having such a difficult time. But where you are down there in Alabama, I mean, you know, there's big Medicaid need down there. No way do I presume to tell you about your own constituency. Uh, you are famed for your understanding of it. You know people need the Medicaid money down there. You know without expansion and without more money, less people will be covered. What do you say to them? Well, you're right. There are those people that are in that category, but there's also another set of people who have seen their health insurance rates triple, triple, up 223% over the last four years on the individual markets and exchanges. And the people who are having to pay those bills they're screaming to high heaven because they can't afford it. It means that they don't have the money by way of example to send their kids to college or they don't have the money by way of example to put the kind of food that they used to be able to put on their tables or to pay for the housing that they need for their families. So again, all of this is interrelated and there are limitations on how much we can afford. And I'm hopeful that we will be able to help those struggling American families that are doing it the right way, that have taken advantage of America, that have those jobs, but which right now they see these premiums skyrocketing right. and they're at a loss as to what to to do so it's it there, there is no easy solution there's need to, needs to be a proper balance and that's what we're all trying to focus on and work towards another problem with this bill is according to the CBO score and the experts that we've had on to analyze, uh, analyze its implications 
you do have this group within the individual marketplace, which you could argue on just a raw human num level are much fewer than the millions of people who will be affected by the Medicaid cuts. But this bill, even if that is the group you want to target, doesn't make it better for them anytime soon. And the reductions in rates, even over time, aren't that impressive. So if you want to help that group, you're not doing enough. Well, that's the argument you can make, but on the other hand, to extend that argument to where you want it, where premiums go back to, say, 2009, pre-Obamacare years, then you'd have to dramatically cut the, the quality of health care benefits for those people who in the past uh, were unable to pay their own way. And so, you, again, you've got that balance. But let's, let's be clear about the Senate bill that you're talking about. Yes, sir. I'd be extraordinarily surprised. Uh, based on what I'm reading, the comments from various senators, if that's the bill that actually comes out of the Senate. Mm. So really we're talking about a health care bill that we don't know about yet because the Senate's not yet drafted it. And we'll see whether Mitch McConnell and the Senate can do its job. Uh, so far they've not been able to, and they've had seven months. They were sworn in in early January just as we were in the House, and seven months later, we st well, six months later, we still don't have uh, that legislation. I'm puzzled about the impasse and why they weren't working for the two or three or four months, for example, when we were working in the House and finally got a bill out, they could have been doing the same thing in the Senate at the very same time. Hmm. Um, let's take a quick break, but I want you to handicap it for me. What do you think the chances are that something gets done this summer? Well, based on the reports I'm seeing recently, I don't think that the chances are very good. But at the same time, Mitch McConnell, he has been able to pull a rabbit out of the hat on occasion. And perhaps he can force some kind of compromise in the United States Senate on this particular health care bill. Uh, time will tell. I think the big issue is, is what comes out of the Senate. Is that good for America or bad for America, short term and long term? Hmm. Let's take a quick break. Congressman, can I indulge you uh, to stay with us for another block to talk about other things that are on the plate for the Congress? Yes, sir, if you wish. Wow. We're getting lucky this morning. All right.